everyone, and welcome to Hope Church's Sunday worship service here in Clarksville, Maryland. We're so delighted that you are joining us today. If you are able, I invite you to please stand. Psalm 34. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. My soul will boast in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant and their faces are never covered with shame. Amen. Let's confess our faith together with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you. 
Romans 15, 4 to 7. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had, so that with one mind and one voice you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Accept one another, then just as Christ accepted you in order to bring praise to God. Let's pray. Dear God, we join together and come to you today with a humble and remorseful heart. We are in need of you more and more, especially during this pandemic, of not only of a virus, but also of hate. Forgive us, forgive us our neighbors, and forgive our nation for the evolution of this pandemic throughout the centuries and recently magnified. We desire you, God, be our shelter. We desire your presence and your guidance so that you will be at the forefront of our lives. May our first desire be to worship. May our first act to be of prayer and may our first word be your name. Help us to be in line with what Paul says in scripture. Thank you for giving us the endurance to persevere when faced with our enemies. When we are tested, you have taught us to rely on your word. When we are lied to, you have taught us to speak the truth. When we are falsely accused, you have taught us to be free of accusing others. And when we are judged, you have taught us to communicate with respect and dignity without slander. Keep us focused on encouraging one another, affirming others, and being faithful and diligent in all that we do. Precious Father, we also come to you with the grateful and thankful heart, because when we ask, you give. When we seek, we will find. When we knock, you open the door. And when we pray, you will answer. Thank you that we can face trials with you at our side, and we can respond with joy as we have living hope within us. Thank you that we can strive for unity and peace in our relationships because we are armed with your love and wisdom. We desire to persevere through our circumstances so that we can grow in maturity and in the word of James, not lacking anything. We pray for a revival of repentance that will lead to a movement towards reconciliation. God, we want to continue learning Help us to hear your voice so your will will be revealed and our reaction is to follow your every command so that as we come together with our different viewpoints, we can still love each other and praise your name, the God who gives lovingly and faithfully. We give you our anxiety. We give you our distress. We give you our worries and troubles and trust that you will make all things new and refresh our souls. Speak in the words that are spoken today through the message. Reveal yourself through our actions and fulfill your purpose for this world each and every day. Thank you for accepting us so that we can move forward and accept others. There has not been a road you have not walked and so by your grace we follow you and we worship you. Fill our days with joy and gladness as we declare the one true God, our Father, and our creator in whom we love. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hello everyone, we're so happy to have you joining Hope Church's worship service today. Here are some announcements. Hope Church is continuing our church-wide um, gatherings virtually, but we are making plans for returning safely to the building with limited in-person gatherings. This includes our Sunday worship service and Wednesday night hour of prayer, HOP, from 8 to 9 p.m. We continue with our Hope Connect, our virtual fellowship time. It's available 30 minutes before the Sunday worship service begins. Please check your email for the Zoom meeting link. We also have ministry time immediately following each Sunday worship service. Using Zoom, the pastors and elders are available to pray for you. So please check your email or our church Facebook group for the Zoom link. We're having a virtual town hall meeting today 
at 3 p.m. to discuss becoming part owners of the Gathering Place building. The Zoom meeting link has been sent already to you, so please check your emails for that and join us at 3 o'clock today. Then next Sunday, July 5th, we will have a virtual congregational meeting also happening at 3 o'clock. Our only agenda is to vote on becoming part owners of the Gathering Place building. You should have already received the Zoom meeting link for this as well. We collected a special mercy offering during the month of April to help those affected by the coronavirus. Holly Loeb, our mercy ministry leader, has a report for us. Good afternoon, Hope Church. It's Holly. I'm giving a quick update on behalf of Mercy Ministry. As many of y'all probably remember, back in April, we had a, a general mercy offering throughout the month. Um, and by God's faithfulness and through your generous giving, we were able to raise $3,890 in total. And we divided that money up to give it to different people as well as <clears throat> different charities who were in need during the pandemic. We gave it to three families who were connected with through safe families who um, were just really facing financial hardship. We were able to like sow a seed into their life as well as our mission partners, Michael Brown, um, who's with My YWAM and the money was for Myanmar and we gave to Pastor Luca in Thailand as well as Dustin Garner, who's at IHOP. Um, we also gave to two local charities. One is the Mana Food Center in Gaithersburg, Maryland and the other is the House of Ruth um, in Howard County, which is a safe haven and a shelter for women who suffer from domestic violence as well as their children. So yeah, we gave to the organizations, the missions partners, and the families individually, and it was all because you, you all gave so generously. So thank you. Um, praise God for your giving. I hope that all is well. Can't wait to see you all soon. Bye. The Rhoda Women's Ministry is having their monthly virtual meetup this Friday, July 3rd, from 8.30 to 9.30 p.m., where they'll connect and encourage one another through prayer and sharing around the theme of peace and justice. Please contact Hannah Chun if you did not receive the Zoom meeting link for this. The outreach ministry is looking for volunteers for its upcoming virtual outreach to the healthcare workers. It'll be time spent encouraging them, sharing the gospel, and also praying for them. If you are interested, please contact Efren Koo. His contact information is on your screen. The pastors will continue doing virtual home visitations into July. So for June and July, the pastors will be doing this. Check your email for information on how you can schedule yours. Beholding Place 2.0, our weekly in-depth Bible study through the book of Philippians, is led by Pastor Q, which meets virtually uh, using Zoom on Saturday mornings from 10 to 11.30 a.m. I believe there are only two sessions left. If you're interested, please email Pastor Q directly. His contact info is on the screen. We've been announcing this for a while now, our VBS 2020 Rocky Railway Reimagined. We'll be hosting this virtual Vacation Bible School this summer, August 14th through the 16th. Online registration is available on our website, which is www.hopemd.church. This Tuesday, June 30th, is the last day to pre-register to make sure that we have a VBS kit reserved for your child. So please invite your friends and neighbors, and don't forget, um, on June 30th, Tuesday, that is the last day to make sure, to guarantee that we have a kit reserved for your child. Our June missions partner is Dustin Garner. He is staff for YWAM in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, his prayer points are on the screen for you. You can find out more information about him and our other missions partners on our website as well. Starting next week in July, we'll be highlighting a different missionary. We'll continue to worship through giving, so if you could use the Venmo app and give ele electronically, please do so now.
Let's pray. Almighty God, we thank you, Lord, as we come before you on this Sunday to worship you and to give you our praise and our thanks. Father, we lift up this offering that has been collected, and we ask that it will be used for your kingdom work. We are so grateful, God, for the generosity of your people that we were able to give into the mercy giving that went to help those being affected by the coronavirus to our various mission partners around the world, God, who are in need. Father, we lift up prayers for those who are hurting, those who are sick due to the pandemic, God. Father, we know that the numbers are spiking in certain areas of our nation, so we ask, God, for your continued compassion and protection over those who are hardest hit, especially the elders. God and others with other health issues. So Father, we ask God that you are near with those God who are suffering from it. Also those who are suffering financially, economically because of this pandemic. And Lord, with um, unrest continues in our nation, Father, we ask again for you are a God of justice. So we ask, God, that your justice would come. And Lord, that your people will unite together and cry out for justice. And Lord, we just pray to you because you are our only hope. And so we lift up to you our mission partner for Dustin Garner, God, who is in Kansas City. We thank you, God, for the work that he is doing there. We lift up our sister, Rana, to you, who is still in the hospital. We ask, God, for your healing hand to be upon her and also with her mother, who is by her bedside. So, Lord, we lift up these prayers and more. We thank you and pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hi, Hope Kids and Jam friends, and happy Sunday. What is the longest journey you've ever been on? Was it a vacation you took with your family or did you move from one place to another? How did you get there? Today you will hear about a man who left his own country to go on a long journey for Jesus. But why would anyone need to go on a long journey for Jesus? Let's find out what Jesus said right before he went back to heaven. It had been 40 days since Jesus died and rose again. Now it was time for him to go back to heaven. Right before he went to heaven, he, Jesus told his followers to go tell people all over the world about him. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said these things, they watched as Jesus rose up into the clouds. The very last thing Jesus told his disciples was to go to and tell other people about him. That is why some people today go on journeys for Jesus, to tell people all around the world about him. People who tell others about Jesus are called witnesses, and some people tell others about Jesus as their job. We call these people missionaries. Jesus knew these, his followers needed help telling others about him after he went back to heaven. God sent his Holy Spirit to live in them and give them power and boldness to tell others. Boldness is overcoming fear and doing what is right with courage. The Holy Spirit helped Jesus, his followers, to be bold in telling others about him. At first, his followers preached to the people in Jerusalem where they lived. More and more people believed and became part of the church. When the Bible talks about the church, it is not talking about a building. The church is God's family. All the people who believe on Jesus and follow him. When people in Jerusalem heard um, the preachings about Jesus, thousands of them became part of the church. The religious leaders, the very same people who demanded Jesus to be killed, were doing all they could to stop his followers from preaching about Jesus. One of those leaders was named Saul. He thought he was doing God's work by stopping those who believed on Jesus, but is that what God wanted him to do? No, Saul wanted to throw the believers in jail and even kill them. But God had a better plan for Saul's life. One day, Saul was on his way to a city called Damascus, where he was going to arrest some of the followers of Jesus. But while he was traveling, something extraordinary happened. Let's listen to what that was. This is Gabriel Kim from Hope Kids TV, reporting to you live from Damascus. 
I'm here with a man who journeyed here with Saul himself. Thank you so much for being here today. Would you please tell us what happened when you were on the road with Mr. Saul? It was the strangest thing. I was traveling to Damascus with Saul and some other men. Saul was excited because he had permission from the leaders to arrest people who were there with Jesus. He thought he was pleasing God by hurting these people. Anyway, we were traveling on the road when all of a sudden a bright light appeared. It was brighter than anything I had seen before. It was so bright we all fell to the ground. Then we heard a voice. We didn't understand it, but Saul knew the voice belonged to Jesus. But didn't this happen after Jesus went back to heaven? You're right, it did. That's why it was so strange. The light disappeared and we all got up again. The rest of us were okay, but Saul was blind. We had to lead him by the hand to Damascus. After the light and the voices, Saul stopped eating for three whole days. Then one of the followers of Jesus named Ananias went to the place where Saul was staying. Ananias had, t had courage and was bold. Saul's original plan was to throw people who followed Jesus, like Ananias, into jail. Ananias prayed for Saul, and it looked like fish scales fell off Saul's eyes. He could see again. Saul believed that he became a Jesus follower too. The excitement he had about arresting followers of Jesus was reversed, and now he's excited to tell others about Jesus. That's amazing. Thank you for sharing with us. You're welcome. Well, there you have it, folks. Blinding light, a voice from heaven, and fish scales. It looks like Saul is a changed man. I'm Gabriel with Hope Kids TV. Have a great afternoon. Wow! When Saul met Jesus on the road, his life was completely changed. God's power is so amazing. The men with Saul didn't know what Jesus said to Saul, but we can look in the Bible to find out. In Acts chapter 9, verses 4 and 5, it says, Saul fell to the ground and he heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. That was Jesus speaking to Saul. After, um, before Saul was killing and arresting Christians, but now he listened to Jesus and became a Christian himself. Jesus completely changed Saul's life. Jesus can change your life too. To find out the rest of the story of Saul and how he became Paul, the apostle, and about his friend Barnabas, go ahead and go to the church website and watch part two of this week's sermon message and check out the rest of the materials and resources on the slides. Hello Hope Church, how are you? I need to say this again. God is good? All the time. God is good all the time. We are living in a very strange and also very difficult season, aren't we? This uh, COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we, we are still working through this thing and and many of us, many are still struggling through these issues, and as well as the demonstrations and the cry for justice and other things in our nation, we are living in a very difficult times. It remind, God, God reminded me one of his promises. He said, those who look to him will be radiant. Their faces will never be ashamed. When you look to our God, we find strength and anchor in our lives. We are able to walk this life with joy and strength. Past few weeks, we have been, God has been taking us to some of the core important truth in the Word of God so that we may anchor our hearts and lives on the Word of God, that we may live and experience the grace and mercy of God in this life. And a few weeks ago, God took us to the great, greatest commandment, showing us the compassion of God and how that we are called to love the Lord our God with all our hearts and minds, soul and strength, and love our neighbor as ourselves. And we also saw how compassion of God feels something, does something, it causes something. And we saw that compassion of God best manifested on the cross through our Lord Jesus Christ. And God also took us to the great commission Christ gave us before he ascended back to the Father, that we should live as witnesses of Christ and we may 
go and make disciples of all the nations because it is his heart. God who so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Last week, Pastor Mimi shared and gave us the word about the heart of God, the Father heart of God. Our God is a perfect Father who not only searches out and looks for the broken ones, but also patiently waits for the broken ones to return back to him and find life and hope in him. And we may become sons and daughters into his arms, into his house. Today, God is leading me into uh, Isaiah 56, 7. This is Hope Church's destiny text. This is the mandate, the name God has given us as a church over 20 years ago, calling us to be house of prayer for everyone, all the peoples, all the nations. I don't know about you, Time after time, I go back to this passage, the promise God has given, and God will meditate and God will highlight different aspects of who we are called to be, a church that God called us to be. And, and in today's passage, uh, in ESB version, it says in this way, and I will bring them to my holy mountain and cause them to rejoice in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be acceptable upon my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all the peoples. Let's pray a little bit. Let's come. Father, we just come before you today. We draw near this afternoon. Father, we come. We worship you. We look to you, lift our eyes unto you, God. We ask right now, God, your word, that you will speak to us. You will meet with us. We want more than good teaching. We want more than good preaching. We want your presence in our lives. We want to meet with you, that you will speak to us, God, that we will encounter you. We love you, God. Be with us. Strengthen us, God. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Before we go into our text, Isaiah 56, 7, I want us to do a little bit of context to look at the word, how this passage, the promise is given, what kind of context it was given. In, in Isaiah 56, God begins to declare that the people should live justice, justly and fairly with all people because his salvation is coming to the people quickly. Is coming to all the peoples. In verse 3 it says, Let not the foreigner who has joined himself to the Lord say, The Lord will surely separate me from his people. And let not the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. For thus says the Lord to the eunuchs who will keep my Sabbath, who chooses the things that please me and hold fast my covenant. Verse 5, I will give in my house and within my walls a monument and a name better than sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to his servants. Everyone who keeps the Sabbath and does not profane it and holds fast my covenant. Verse 7, our text says, These I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Verse 8. The Lord God, Adonai, says, who gathers the outcasts of Israel declares, I will gather yet others to him beside those already gathered. See, God was speaking to Israelites and God was saying he's bringing his salvation to all the peoples. 
you know, as, I, as I reflect, as I consider this text, our, uh, our destiny text, the name from, of our church, Hope Church, come from, I just, I, I just want to go through a few things. and I want to highlight what God is saying to us a little bit. It begins by really the thought that really God highlights to me is that it is God is building his house. God says, my house. Or Jesus says, my father's house. In Matthew eleven seventeen, Mark eleven seventeen, 17, when Jesus was clearing the temple because of what they have turned the temple into, Jesus began to teach and say to them, it is it not written, my house, He's quoting Isaiah, shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations. But you have made made it into a robber's den. In in John's gospel, Jesus, when he clears the temple, calls that house, my father's house. You see, God is building his house. Not our house, not building an organization that we are building for us. God has said, Hope is, will be my house. It is God's house. It is God who is the owner of the house where, where God the Father loves to come. And this is where the, he loves to come and dwell. He is building. He is the one who will decide who will be part of it, who will not be part of it. He will be the one who will say who doesn't belong, who will belong. He is the one who invites all our Father's house. Hope is to be our Father's house, not run as an organization, run by people. In John 14, 2, Jesus says, in my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it was not so, I would have told you, for I go to prepare a place for you. In our Father's house, Jesus said, many, many rooms. He is building his house. Hope is to be His house, God's house. Second thing that really comes to me, God reminds me is, he said, in that place, he will cause them to be joyful. Uh, One of the uh, pics that I found on Google search, I like it because it highlights a a, a section here. It says, I will bring to my holy mountain and give them joy, the big, bold joy in my house of prayer. See, God says, in the place, I'm going I'm to cause them to be joyous. Who? The foreigners who are not allowed to come in. The eunuchs who were imperfect, who, were, who had uh, 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 brokenness in their body. They were not fit to come into the temple. And the foreigners who are not people of God, they could not, they are not allowed to come. But God said, in that, my house, when, when he's bringing the salvation through Jesus Christ, the healed, they will be rejoicing because they will be accepted there. People who are not acceptable before are not accepted. So people who are rejected now, welcome into the house of God. Let me, hi- let me read that. I, I highlighted that word over there. And I will, bring, bring, I will bring them to my holy mountain and cause them to rejoice in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be acceptable upon my altar. You see, until now in the law, it declared those who have defects in their body are not fit to come in to the temple. They are not allowed to join God's assembly. Those are foreigners who are not God's people. They don't belong in the God's house. In the religion everywhere, not only Christianity, everywhere, all the places you go, they always divide who is in, who is out, who belongs, who does not belong, who is outcast, who is in, 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 inside people, all those things. But God says when he, brings, when he brings salvation through Christ, when God is building his house, God said those who are rejected are now accepted by faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. They are no longer rejected. They are no longer separated from Christ or excluded. They are now brought in. Therefore, there will be joy in the house. There will be joy in my house. My God says, hope will be a place where true joy will be experienced to all people. And the third thing I see here God is highlighting to me is house of prayer. 
Let me go back to the verse again. Isaiah 56, 7. He says, we see here, their burnt offerings and their sacrifice will be acceptable on my altar. You see, the temple they had those days. People went in, they brought animals for sacrifice, for the forgiveness of their sins. And that was the main, one of the main things they did. And they forgot the whole point of sacrifice wasn't just to be forgiven. It wasn't just that they'll be cleansed from the sins in their lives. That it was so that they may come in. They may meet with God. See, the temple. It was the, the outer court is where the offering, the sacrifices were done. But inner court is where you go in and meet with God. God's desire was that God's house would be a place where we meet God. Where we house the prayer, where we bring our knees before our God, we talk to our God, how we meet with God, and we find our hope and our find our answers in Him. The sacrifice and offerings made us available to come in to the house of prayer. But now with Christ Jesus coming as our sacrifice, sacrifice is done. We can come in. God's house now becomes a house of prayer. Place where our cries are heard, place where we come and meet with our Father and meditate on Him and spend time with Him and meet with our God. For in His presence is fullness of joy. In a house of prayer is where you find God's presence. Now this, this is what God was highlighting to me this whole week. It's, and then he says, because the word for is important here. For my house shall be called house of prayer for all the people. The word for or because. Look at the verse again. Same verse again. See? It will be accepted on my altar for because my house shall be called a house of prayer. As I look at the whole con whole story of the passage, whole point was not even about, not as much about house of prayer. It is not only, not only that, it really is about, it is for all people. For my house shall be called house of prayer for all the peoples. This is why he was mentioning about eunuchs who didn't belong. They talked about foreigners who didn't belong. You see, God's house, hope is about where all peoples, everyone is invited in. Everyone is coming in. I realized when God gave us this name 20 years ago, hope was a tiny little ministry in a and Korean American English ministry. Small group of people. We are very Korean, small bunch. In that time, God began to call us. You are not just, you are, you are called to be hope. How to pray for all the people. And in that time, God began to grow and transform us, began to make a community. I remember, I remember year 2003 when I went to Kansas City to pray and fast and seek God. God gave me a word from a prophetic lady. Isaiah 55, 5. I remember because number is so simple. 555, 555. The people you do not know will run to you. People you do not know will run to you. God was saying that, that people that I do not know, God, they are, they are God was bringing. The hope is becoming house of prayer for all the people. Since then, by 2007, hope no longer a Korean church. And in 2008, hope became an independent church birthed out of a mother church, Korean immigrant church, because you're no longer a Korean church. We are church of all peoples. And since then, we, uh, we have for six years, we moved from school to school for six years. As we have about three or four different schools, we bounced back and forth. We had lug, lugged all our luggages and all our equipments week in, week out. And when, when we prayed about weather, because whenever there's any inclement weather, School will be closed. We could not worship. We prayed. And we asked. And all those things. And four years ago, God brought us to this place. Gathering place. What I saw in that time, God was making us hope, house, a prayer for all the people. Where all people, all races, all background are able to come, become a house. In, in a house together. You see, it's for all peoples. I like the word people. Some translations say nations, 
You can do that way, but I like the word people is better because nations often are bigger word. In a nation, there are many, many peoples in it. Like America, this USA has many, it's filled with many, many peoples in, this, in it. Not always you know, behaving nicely to one another, but many peoples within nations. This is the God's it is house of prayer for all the peoples. You see, God was speaking, really giving us a name and speaking to us what Apostle Paul declares one of the most fundamental truths in the Bible, Galatians chapter 3, verse 26 to 28. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus, regardless of where you are born, regardless of what kind of background, in Christ Jesus, by faith in Christ Jesus, you're all sons of God. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. Look at the next verse, powerful verse. Because there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free man, there is neither male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. You see, God was saying his house will be, shall be called house of prayer for all the people because in Christ Jesus, by faith, all people, whether man or woman, whether Jews or Gentiles, whether slave or free, all are brought in and become a family of God, become people of God. This is why in that passage God was talking about eunuchs and foreigners, those who doesn't belong, those are excluded. They are all now brought in by the blood of Jesus Christ. I realized God was speaking to our church a long time ago, giving us a name, declaring, getting us ready for the seasons we are in. We are in the midst of a season where we, our nation is struggling with racism, and definitions. You see, church is called to be different, called to be heavily minded, eschatological community. I'll explain the word a little later. Because what I use in many, many years, eschatological um, community. Let me give you some few verses. This is powerful passage here. Ephesians chapter 2 talks about people of God. So now you Gentiles are no longer strangers and Foreigners, you are citizens along with all of God's holy people. You are members of God's family. We are all the part of the family of God. Together we are his house, the God's house, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. And the cornerstone is Christ Jesus himself. Look at the next verse, powerful. We are carefully joined together in him, in Christ, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. Through him, through Christ, you Gentiles are also being made part of this dwelling where God lives by his spirit. You see, we are family in God, in Christ Jesus. We are being built together as a house of God. In Christ, we are all built, being built together as a temple a dwelling of God in the Spirit. See, it is God's desire and God's heart. God was speaking when God has gave us a name that we are called to be house of prayer for all peoples. You see, in Isaiah 56, 8, the very next verse it says, the Lord God who gathers the outcasts of Israel declares, I will gather yet others to him beside those already gathered. You know, one of the things, and I, I, I am always am slow to trust and believe and do things. I remember about four years ago when Hope Church was getting ready to uh, move into uh, this place, I was the one who registered the most out of the old elders and pastors. I was the one who registered most and gave everybody grief. And I was so reluctant. But when we moved here, I saw the name, the gathering place written on the top of the building and met the Jewish rabbi in the Messianic Jewish congregation that meets here on Saturday, and the Saturdays. And finding out that they are the oldest the Messianic Jewish congregation in the in, 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 in United States, I realized 
that word, the gathering place, came from this verse, Isaiah 56, 8. You see, God called us, who is a house of prayer for everyone, Isaiah 57, 6, 7 church, moved him to Isaiah 56, 8 building four years ago. And, you know, and what I didn't know was that God was ordaining our ways. Where would you find a place where Messianic Jewish congregation and mostly white community church and mostly Asian church in the afternoon and in the evening, mostly black church meeting in one building? God is literally saying this is a gathering place where God is gathering all the peoples. My house shall be called house of prayer for all peoples. Amen? Look at the next two verses here, Revelation. This is what I mean by church is to be eschatological community. Church is to reflect the heaven. In Revelation, Apostle John had a, a, a vision of heaven in the, in the last days. And here he says, And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open the seals, for you, meaning Jesus, were slain. And by your blood you ransomed people for God. From every tribe and language, people and nation, see, every tribe, people, nation, and tongue. Jesus saved, ransomed, and you, and you have made them a kingdom and priest to our God, and they shall reign on the earth. Again, in chapter 7, it says, I looked again, I saw a large, huge crowd, too huge to count. Everyone was there. This MSG version. All nations and tribes, all races and languages were there, singing. They were standing, dressed in white robes, waving palm branches, standing before the throne and the Lamb, and heartily singing, salvation to our God on his throne, salvation to the Lamb. Declare, this is heavenly sin in, 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 in end times, eschatological time, when the, the kingdom of heaven, heaven shows all people, all race, all tongues are gathered loving God. You see, the church, house of God is to reflect the heart of God. And then we, our church is to reflect the, the, what it looked like in, in, in the end times, in the heavens. The church is supposed to reflect God's heart where all peoples, all races, all uh, our language and whatnot are all become family. We, are, we love one another. We grow as people of God together and building kingdom of God together. This is house of God for all peoples. Let me stop here. Where are we now? How are we doing here? God has called us to be house of prayer for all the people. God has been moving and guiding us. How are we doing now? Remember God's word, John 3, 16. For God loved the world, all the peoples in it, so much that he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him, everyone who believes in him, will not perish but have everlasting eternal life in God. Look at what message version says. I like the way he puts it. This is how much God loved the world. He gave his son, his one and only son. And this is why. So that no one need to be destroyed. No one need to be destroyed. But we are all sinners in need of savior. We are all broken people needing a savior. But regardless of cultures, of races, or language, we are all sinners needing of God's salvation. By believing in him, anyone can have a whole and lasting life. And it says, God didn't go to all the trouble of sending his son, merely to point an accusing finger, telling the world how bad it was. No, he came to help, to put the world right again. 
He is the one who will make all things right again. Jesus Christ, our Lord God, came to save those, anyone and everyone who will trust in him and make all things right in the world again. That gospel reminds us and tells us that God's house is supposed to be called to be house of prayer for all people where all people, the language, tribe, and, and races, and all are welcome. We become family of God, growing together. You see, this is what God had in mind when God called Abraham the father of faith. And said, you, he told him to go, and I'll, I'll bless you, I'll make you great. And God says, and I will bless those who bless you. And the one who curses you, I will curse and in you, in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. That's God's design from the beginning. Through Abraham and his seeds, all people on the earth will be blessed. All the families. This has been God's design from the beginning. This is a phrase that I use many times. We are to be more than open. I like the word open. Yes, we are open. For example, we say we are open to the Holy Spirit. But we, have, we need to be more than open. We need to be seeking after the Spirit of God. Not just open. We have to be more than just welcoming. Welcoming church is okay. We need to be more than welcoming. We have to be actually going and seeking and searching. The story that uh, uh, the children's uh, uh, message that Veronica was giving talked about that just now. You see, in Matthew 18, Jesus gives a short parable. What do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, and does he not leave the 99 on the mountains? Go and search for the one that is straying? Of course. If it turns out that he finds it, truly I say to you, he rejoices over it. More than over 99, which have not gone astray. So it is, it is not the will of your Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones perish. You see, it is not God's will that anyone perish. It is not God's will. So God has called, and God said, you, the, my house will be called house of prayer for all the peoples. Where all the barriers are broken down, all the brave barriers are broken down, where all are invited and all are brought into the house of God, becoming a family of God. The question is, not just are we open to be open? No. We are, yes, we, we, we are open. We want to be more than open. We want to be actively going after and loving people and seeing God's grace and mercy come in this world. We are called to be builders of hope. We are called to be, we are building hope in our lives and those around. We are to be building hope in this world because our Lord Jesus is the build hope of this world. I'm going to have the praise him come. I want to talk to you a little bit. God has been speaking to us in many ways. You see, God's message has been, I've been stuck on this passage, and God's, John 3, 16, for I don't know how long. God so loved the world. All the peoples in this world, yellow, black, white, purple, whatever colors, Whatever culture, whatever ethnic background they may have, God loved each and every one. They are all, whether how broken you are, God loved all these people. God so loved the world. He didn't stop that. He gave his one and only son so that we don't need to be perish. We don't need to perish, but by trusting in him, we may will find life in this world. God will transform our hearts and lives. The solution in this world is not in changing the system itself. It is really about our hearts being transformed by the grace and mercy of God, us being forgiven, our inner you know, man and soul being born again by the heavens, born above, turning our lives to God, becoming the people God called us to be. We are called to be hope bringers. 
we are to be for all the people. Are we loving? Are we going? Are we building God's house yet? Let's worship God together. people of God. He is building us. He called us to be hope in this world. House of God. House of prayer for all the peoples. Everyone. In our Father's house there are many, many rooms. In our Father's house all are welcome. Every people Every language, every nation, all are invited and all are invited to come and find hope and joy and peace and healing and new life that is in Christ Jesus, our Father's house. We are called to be house of prayer for all the peoples. Our God, Father, God invites and calls, challenges all of us as people of God to love to be in our Father's house, love to see many, many those who need, who are straying, the sheep that are lost, that God, our Father calls us to be the bringers of hope to them and they may come and find life in our God. The God, our Father's house will be built in His grace and mercy. Are we going? Are we praying? Are we building the house of God together? Are we living as people of God together? I want to invite anyone, some prayers, you need prayers, you need to find hope in, hope in God. We want you to join us time of prayer. If you need any help, any prayer, come and join us at the time of, uh, at the prayer.
I'm a ministry where our pastors and elders will meet with you, pray with you, help you through, and we will encourage you. Let us come. Father, we love you. We honor you. We were not a people. We were separated from you. We were broken sinners, God. You came and spoke to us. You saved us by grace. In Christ Jesus, you made us alive. You raised us up. You seated us with Christ in the heavenly places. You, you, build, you call us your family. You call us the sons and daughters. Father, we thank you so much for grace. We thank you so much that you are building a family with us, God, in us. Oh, help us to love one another as you call us to love. Help us to love. Help us be the house you call us to be. Loving the world. Loving as you love God. And people may find life and hope that is in you, God. So we are yours. Help us to love. Help us to follow you. Help us to serve you. We honor you, God. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And love of God the Father. Communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit of God be upon each and every one who trusts in Christ Jesus for hope and life. Be upon our church until forever and ever. Amen. 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 <laughs>